It's time for the Financial Crisis Talk Center with Ken Gross and David Einstandig from Fav Gross. Credit card debt is number one. I think, it, I view it as financial cancer. 40% of your gross income is going to just pay the debt service. You got no chance of getting out. I would give up my credit score to get rid of debt. Here's your host, Ken Gross. All right, welcome back to the Financial Crisis Talk Center. We've got special guests with us today. Ed Sarpolis from Target Insight, pollster, political insider, Michigan expert in campaigns, regular on the show. Good to have you back with us, Ed. Love it. It's always insightful to listen and hear what you got to say. we got Phil Cavanaugh, state representative, insider as well from the standpoint of you've been around uh, Wayne County, Detroit politics, Michigan politics for for the better part of what, 30 years, <laughs> 20 uh, years? I've been a politician for 12, an elected official for 12, but interested all my life. Yeah, your dad was was mayor of the city of Detroit? 62 to 70. So so when was Gribbs mayor? Uh, right 70 after. to 74. Okay, so he, so it, when, when Duggan got ele- elected and all the whole, I mean, it's just, it's so annoying sometimes. The whole national media, if you watch CNN or you pick up the Wall Street Journal, the headline was Detroit elects first uh, white mayor since Roman Cripps. 40 years. And I always thought of, I mean, your, your, your dad's middle initial was P, right, wasn't it? Yeah. Because I just remember as a kid growing up, it was always Jerome P. Kavanaugh. It was never just Jerome Kavanaugh. It was always Jerome P. Well, what's amazing, in fact, is most of the voters who voted in the primary and general election in Detroit actually would have voted for his dad. So the fact that you're saying that there was not a white mayor, no, they've been voting for white candidates most of their lives. Oh, so the same electorate. Uh, Many of them. Uh, those are the ones yeah. that, that was a substantial portion of the. Yes. What was the percentage turnout in the vote? Like, it was very large, about twenty to twenty-five percent in the in the general. Yeah, it was very high. But oh, back then, oh, back then it was very high back in the '60s. Yeah, turnout was very high back in the '60s yeah. in Detroit. But that was a largely white, more white vote than it is right. today. But many of the African Americans who were there in the '60s are now senior citizens. They do remember his dad. Yeah. So what what was the vote in the election for mayor? Fifty-five, forty-five. Uh, on, no, the percentage. But what was the percentage of turnout? Turnout. Twenty-five. 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 Right, was that a little? Was that higher than was it anticipated, or was that? It's what, higher. It's a little bit higher than it was four years ago. It was one hundred twenty-six, about ten thousand more voters than it was four years ago. Yeah. So twenty-five. It's twenty-five percent of seven hundred thousand, or no, five hundred forty-five thousand. Yeah, I mean, it's is a, what it, they say is the registered voters. It's like you could almost walk around the city and find enough voters to elect yourself mayor if you just go door to door. What's interesting enough, it's only the same 61,000 households that vote, whether it's one person shows up or three out of that household. It's basically you're limiting yourself about 60 to 70,000 households in the city of the ones that you have to actually talk to to vote. Wow. And then, right, so now how does this Most 60, people pay him for yeah, that Yeah, I know. I know. It's just, uh, this is great. <laughs> all right, and then how do we drill down on that 61,000? That then goes down to how many neighborhoods? How many neighborhoods? Well, there's actually 139 neighborhoods in the city. Actually, about 100 that actually participate in elections. So, are there four key people to talk to to get elected that we should just go to? You know, like, you know, hire Ed, pay him whatever the fee is. He'll tell you the four key people you need to talk to, and then you and then you win the election. I will tell you the best thing this is people understand is when Mike Duggan learned this from uh, when he was working with Ed McNamara and worked for other politicians. It comes down to the senior citizens in the city of Detroit. They are the elders. They are the leaders. They are the spokesperson for the city. They were the last to move. Seniors voted for Mike Duggan at 59%. Those younger than seniors only voted 52%. Seniors are the key to the city of Detroit. Yeah, it seems like seniors are the key to uh, you know, most elections nowadays. But even big, so even in the general election, it was yeah. the seniors that determined this election. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so it's it's this show's going to air on TV on November 24th, and there's been a lot of coverage on uh, the Kennedy assassination, November 23, 1963. So I want to take a, a, a couple minutes and just reflect on that. And you know, it's always there's two events now in our lives that everyone knows where they were when they happened. When Kennedy was assassinated, Brian, where were you? Well, in 1963, you weren't even here. I wasn't even a glimmer in my parents' eye. Ed, where were you? I was in fourth grade in geography class, and I went home to see my parents were crying in the kitchen. I was in fourth grade too, Miss Dunsky. I remember she walked into the classroom crying. Yep. I was two years old playing with toys. On the do you remember floor. which toy you were playing I with? I do not. <laughs> okay. And then 9/11 is the other is is the other moment in time that you know that just that, that stands stills. Uh, 
I've always been a Kennedy fan. Of, you uh, remember when he drove night. through East Detroit and when he came, he made a stop during his presidential bid. It was like you know, I remember that he had a road tour in Detroit, East Detroit, came in through. No, I, I don't remember that. It was that pretty cool. Been, it would have been good to see. Okay, no, I just remember when he came through my neighborhood when he was running for for president, and the, 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 it was kind of interesting to see a president uh, in your backyard like that. Oh, a absolutely. So the thing that I, I wanted to pick up, I wanted to try and share something about Kennedy maybe trying to be different than all the specials in the shows. So what, what I kind of looked at was uh, beyond all the glamour and uh, the fact that he was a historian and – you know the womanizing and everything else. There was there's so much magic to Kennedy that we're still captured with, but I think one of the things that that people are not aware of is how many you know his words were so uh, had, had such impact. Now there's key speeches and things that we all remember. Ask not what you can do for you know your country, but what you know what, what your what you can do for your country. But I want to just share a couple others. I, I I did some research and I found a quote site and it's a, it was called brainyquote.com if you ever want to look look for quotes and it had five pages of quotes from Kennedy so i went through them and i tried to pick out some that i thought were germane, germane to our lives today that that i wanted to share uh, it is unfortunate fact that we can secure peace only by preparing for war the very word secrecy, this is going to what we were talking about a little bit, is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as, as a people, inherently historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. Those who dare to fail miserably can achieve greatly. I like that one. Let us not seek the Republican answer or the Democratic answer, but the right answer. Let us not seek to fix the blame for the past. Let us accept our own responsibility for the future. For time and the world do not stand still, change is the law of life, and those who look only to the past or the present are certain to miss the future. We would like to live as we once lived, but history will not permit it. And then I, this one kind of like, uh, I want to finish with, just kind of says a little bit of the side of his humor, I thought. I think this is the most extraordinary collection of talent of human knowledge that has ever been gathered at the White House, with the possible exception of when Thomas Jefferson died alone. <laughs> the guy was remarkable, and it goes on and on with the, the, the phrases and, and the statements that he had. And what I, what I realized is that's part of his magic that we don't talk about as much, but I think that's what lives on forever, because your words stay with us. We'll take a break. We're going to talk about Wayne County. I couldn't get out of the car. I couldn't run or exercise. I couldn't work. Dr. Lewis Radden believes that pain shouldn't have to wait. His Spine Specialist of Michigan is a comprehensive center dedicated to helping you manage pain now. Expect the latest techniques and personalized care. Why suffer another minute? He's the best. I tell people that he's the one that saved my life. Make your appointment with Dr. Radden. Call 248-792-9496. If your house is underwater, please listen to this important message. The rules have finally changed. We're seeing some great loan modifications with reduced principal, and short sales are easier to get done than people think. The biggest problems I see are people wait too long or they try and do it themselves. There are no second chances. If you're underwater in your house, call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. No one ever thinks that a serious injury can happen to them, but it can and it does, and it can happen to you. And when it does, you need a fighter in that courtroom for you. Call me, Ben Johnson. Automobile accident, police misconduct, medical malpractice, product liability. You know what you're up against, how hard it is to get answers. When all you want is justice, call me, Ben Johnson. Whatever your legal crisis, I will fight for you. Call me today. Do you have tax problems, unfiled returns, facing levies on wages in your property? You need an expert, not a cartoon character or salesman. Thav Gross is your solution. You need to look at the big picture. That's what we do. We develop a plan that's right for you. I had major tax problems. I didn't know what to do. We did. We sat down together and solved your tax problem. No more letters, no more phone calls. They saved me. 
Call Thav Gross, 888-235-HELP. Going from hourly to salary seemed like a good career move, but now you're working 60 hours a week instead of 40, and you aren't getting paid any of that extra time. You're stuck, right? Wrong. You can be on salary and still be entitled to overtime. If you've been wrongly denied such pay, you may be entitled to that and more. Gold Star Law is here to help you through your employment law problem, whatever it is. Gold Star Law, protecting employees' rights. Call 1-800-WAGES-10 for a free consultation today. All right, welcome back. All right, so can, you know, I, I got the date wrong. Uh, uh, it was November 22nd, not November 23rd. And, and, one, uh, and a caller called in and pointed out that a lot of Kennedy's quotes came from his speechwriters, which is true. I mean, you, I mean, you have to say that. But the guy had a way of delivering it, and if you really – read back and look at a lot of what the guy was. He was a historic history buff. He was his writing books. his books. I mean I mean a lot of it I think I think it's true you always have the benefit of great speech writers when you're when, when you're at that level. Certainly his inauguration speech was was I mean they've always I don't remember who the speech writer was, but they've given the guy a lot of credit for for those statements. Anyway, so I appreciate the call. Um, Wayne County What's happening in Wayne County? We, you know, it's like, to some extent, before the, well, now I wouldn't say before the uh, bankruptcy got filed for Detroit, but we've had undertones going on for the last six months that there's much greater financial problems in the Wayne County than the press seems to be picking up on. Which, and if the press doesn't pick up on it, then nobody knows. Well, about there's it. that great jail project that they're building. That's it's 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 coming in under budget. It's doing so well, and 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 it's going to be a great facility. Yeah. Did Gilbert end up buying that? Uh, he, it's under. It's, it was in the papers this morning. It's basically he offered fifty million dollars. Primary was at twenty million for the main building, three million for the buildings around it. And the, the state city has a vote coming up, doesn't it? There's a sixty day memor, memorandum of understanding that both sides do their due diligence, but I think ultimately he will. My issue with that. Well, fifty million for that compared to they can't even get four hundred thousand for the Packard plant. Right, four hundred and five is, <laughs> yeah, where it's is that at. what the number is now? Yeah. Well, they got an extra two hundred thousand though because the guy the, defaulted. The guy on defaulted two on the, the two hundred hard money. So well, he doesn't care about the it must the two hundred must not have been his money. It, I mean, I would like go crazy to default on two hundred thousand dollars. It's pretty insane. Right. I just want to get in very quickly. You're on the Wayne County so coming up December seventh. Uh, Ken, you'll be one of our guest speakers and uh, at our community forum. Where is Wayne County at? What's going to happen to it coming this December seventh on a Saturday? All right, tell us more about it, Ed. What 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 exactly are we doing? What we're doing, the fact is that there's been a lot of conversation. Is is Wayne County going to default? It's going to go into bankruptcy. What is its conditions? Has it met the state triggers? And we're bringing in some noted experts too in this room. We got Representative Kevin will be talking what what what's the view from last what can be done. You'll be talking about bankruptcy. We have ex state treasurer Robert Klein, uh, who's involved in in the past under previous administrations in providing those. We've got uh, Mitch Bean. We we bring some experts and saying where is Wayne County? Where is it at? Is it ready to go into bankruptcy or FM or can it even file? Are we there yet? Right, so when, and this is December seventh. Where is it going to be held? At How the present people... time, it's going to be at U of M Dearborn. Uh, and I, we're walking down the hall. We'll be putting out information through emails and uh, to invite people to come listen to you and other people to talk about it. Have we picked a time for it yet? It's between 10 and 12 on Saturday, December 7th. No charge to come? No charge to come. Do you have to bring coffee or anything? Just bring yourselves. Okay. Uh, it's good. It, it'll, be, it'll, it'll be fun. It'll be a fun topic. It'll be kind of this, consider this like a prelude to it. How serious are the financial problems in Wayne County? When Detroit was going through its financial crisis, I mean, when uh, the governor was looking at it, Andy Dillon, the treasurer, said to me that Wayne County has as many benchmarks uh, for an emergency manager, according to the state law. But the governor can't tackle them both at the same time. Um, you talk about the jail project. There's many uh, bad projects that are going to hamstring us for years. But just the... The county executive keeps pointing to lower and lower uh, revenue and property values. Other counties, other municipalities are balancing their budget. Um, my issue is 80% of the budget, people expect it to, and it should be spent on criminal justice. It should be spent on the courts, the judges, the prosecutor, the sheriff, the jails, etc. And it's really not. The way Wayne County has been run the last decade is, here's your budget. If you don't like it, sue me. 
So we spend most of our money on lawsuits, you know, covering the the sheriff's attorneys and corp counsel over in Wayne County. Uh, there's no sit down and let's negotiate. There's no budgeting two and three years out like the county to the north of us, which is rated the best county in the country. Yeah, they seem, Oakland never seems to have those issues. And I, it's, I just it's saw that it. simple. He sits yeah. down at the table and says, this is what we're looking at. Let's we all have deal. to live within this. Wayne County, there's no conversation like that. It's always just finger pointing and just shift the burden to somebody else. And yeah, I saw I, I saw Kim Worthy's quote. Didn't I, I think I saw it yesterday? Like 23 of her non of her um, independent contractor staff were cut, just like that. That and and then she said it was a laughing stock. The caseloads for the assistant uh, county prosecutors is six times. In Wayne County, they do six times the caseload that they do in Oakland County. And Oakland County doesn't have a light load either. Right. Um, and that's how you really fix it. You look at the criminal justice system as a wheel, and, and you need to fix all the spokes. Do you need to spend 80% of the money on criminal? On, on, is it that high of a percentage of, of a budget has to go to criminal uh, issues is it? It's that big of an undertaking. Well, the court system. That's also the civil Between, court yeah. system. So, be courts, police, fire, and safety. Does that include fire at least? It, we, uh, counties don't deal with fire. Those oh, okay. are at that's a municipal level. Municipal level. And arguably, the sheriff is just a jailkeeper in Wayne County, not law enforcement. Yet, I'm in favor of the expanded role. Yeah. We have to bring down crime crime rates somehow. Um, but you as a taxpayer, what do you expect your county to do? Roads, and that's handled by, you know, the gas tax and your portion thereof, and public safety. What more do you look at? Do you look at them to build horse tracks? Do you look at them to, you know, uh, build a $150 million debacle? No, that should have been contracted out to the experts. Instead, there was no oversight. Oh, so, I mean, yeah, so that whole project was actually being handled in-house, so in to speak. House. They're the contractor. They're right. the g general. Yeah, that that's that's kind of beyond stupid. I mean, like, you know, I wouldn't... You know. Hind hindsight's always twenty twenty and that type of thing. Well, but yeah, everybody's but out there trying to get their what fingers is a county, into the What pot. does a county executive know about building a building? I mean, it doesn't... I mean, you got to have experts. I don't know. What does a county executive know about running a county? That's an interesting, other interesting question. That's probably... That's probably the source of the problem. Uh, we're going we're to take a break. In fact, you're, you're hitting on a point of something I was thinking about the other day. I'll share with you after the break. We'll be back. You like your job. What you don't like is the way your boss has been treating you. He's making comments about how you look instead of your work, and he's been touching you inappropriately. If you complain, is he allowed to fire you? Absolutely not. Unwelcome sexual comments, advances in contact are illegal in the workplace. Make him pay. Gold Star Law is here to help you through your employment law problem, whatever it is. Gold Star Law, protecting employees' rights. Call 1-800-WAGES-10 for a free consultation today. Every family has the family meeting. and We all know what that means. Dad's got dementia. What are we going to do? What's the care plan that the family has in place? Usually they don't or they struggle with a care plan. When you go home tonight and you talk to your tax person and you talk to your financial person and say, what's the plan that you have in place? And as soon as they don't give you an answer, give me a call because I can do it for you. Financially strapped? Do you want to save your home? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Double action. Shooting center and gun shop. For the largest selection of guns, accessories, and ammunition. Double action is your only pro gun shop. And now you can train with the best in our basic CCW course. With the most comprehensive curriculum, the best resources, and most accomplished staff. Don't be fooled by cheap imitations. Double action is the only place to get your CCW or renewal. Double action. We're on DeQuinder and Madison Heights. No one ever thinks that a serious injury can happen to them, but it can and it does. 
and it can happen to you. And when it does, you need a fighter in that courtroom for you. Call me, Ven Johnson. Automobile accident, police misconduct, medical malpractice, product liability. You know what you're up against, how hard it is to get answers. When all you want is justice, call me, Ven Johnson. Whatever your legal crisis, I will fight for you. Call me today. All right, welcome back. All right, before we get right back to Wayne County, I want a couple quick announcements. We've got a seminar coming up on, it's not till January 15th, so you've got plenty of time to prepare for it. We have found over the period of time that I've talked to Brian, Brian and I have debated this point, people really don't want to think about financial issues in the middle of the buying frenzy for the holidays. The, so, the silly season. Um, because that's the kind of spending season. Yeah, that's the spending season. So we kind of decide we do a moratorium on uh, the serious nature of budgeting and being smart about your finances, and we we save that till the turn of the uh, turn of the year. So we, our next seminar is January fifteenth. It's a Wednesday, seven to eight thirty p.m. And we're actually changing the topic mix for the seminars starting next year. Uh, this the the topic for this seminar is going to be 2014 the road to success it's not going to be specific to financial crisis issues it's going to be the importance of budgeting in the home and in your business planning for your parents last years which includes medicaid planning living positive unlimited retirement and social security protecting your estate from underwater property, rental property that's underwater is a big problem for people that have successful su estates, but they don't want that property in their estate when they die. Uh, can I still short sell or modify my home, whether it's biz or business property? Uh, what's the smartest strategy? So it's going to be a much broader span of looking at topics. Brian and I have talked about the need that we're going to kind of concentrate on budgeting issues and so forth. And, and see where things go, you know. And I always have I always have fun with Brian when we talk about budgeting because I always tell him, "Do not um, take away my rights to Starbucks." I understand. You can choose how to spend your money, any way you want. My goal when I when I educate people in budgeting is to eliminate the waste in their budget and help them get more satisfaction out of the spending that they have and that they do. And that's the, that's one of the big focuses we're going to bring into this this seminar is how to get from Sunday to Saturday positively. And kidding aside, I've I've watched you do it and I've listened to you. You are a master at it, and it's and it's like everything else. It's an art. People, what what people do and people make the critical mistake is you leave money on the table. You waste money you don't need to to to, to waste. And if all of a sudden you can capture that money and start putting it away to retirement, it's the difference between having a retirement and not. So it's really critical stuff. I want to thank our sponsors, Ven Johnson Law, Gold Star Law, Samasco Law, Double Action Shooting Range and Gun Shop. I think I need to get Al Allen back on the show soon. I want to talk about some gun issues because it's just pervasive out there. Still, still controversial. You know, he loves guns, but I always like to have him on the show to debate the point. Uh, Spine Specialists of Michigan, two new uh, sponsors coming on board, Cardiology Associates of Michigan and uh, Elite REO Services, Alan Stalter, real estate broker. Thank our uh, gift certificate sponsors, Week to Week, Johnny Pomodoros, and Detroit Popcorn. All right, let's go back to Wayne County. Phil, you asked, you, you said rhetorically, what do you expect from your county? And what I said to you at the break is, you know, yeah, you know, I just I just get up in the morning and go to work like everybody else. I didn't realize that the county's not responsible for fire. It's just that's the municipalities. We don't even know. We we, we don't know what we we just kind of have to live day to day. We expect them to be run efficiently. That's what we expect. We expect money not to be squandered. We expect there to be police, fire, and safety. We expect to be safe in our homes. If you're in Detroit, we expect the lights to be on. If we call 911, we damn well expect to see an ambulance within 30. Well, we want it there in 30 seconds. 30 minutes is, 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 is ridiculous. That's what we want. And a lot of those examples you gave are the city, and I think that's where Mike Duggan's success was in Detroit because people looked to the city for those services, so he did those in-house neighborhood conversations um somebody running for county executive 
would be a little harder because if they said, what are you going to do about that abandoned building? Well, the county actually could because I believe that the Wayne County Treasurer owns a lot of those. But in general, trash pickup, the response time for police, that, that's seen by the municipality. People expect a good use of their tax dollars. Um, Detroit, Wayne County, uh, well, Wayne County actually took care of mental health. That is now a, a standalone authority. One reason that the state enacted legislation, so it's not a department of the county, it is now a standalone authority, and that check of $640 million a year goes directly to the authority, is county administration was mismanaging it, and they saw that. It, it was a whole layer of administration. Um, but Wayne County handles things like veteran affairs, and we still haven't spent the money. We, we kick back money every year to the state because we don't get enough services out to the vets. Actually, Michigan is so 49th in the country. You have the money, but then you don't get to use it because you don't spend it time within the time frame you're required. That, don't we, don't that, we just have a, so sad. a bureaucracy here that's layers and layers of nonsensical bull? I mean, you've got too many people with too many fingers going, what about me, what about me? And no efficiency in the way the business of Wayne County is run. Rather than just running it like a business, we run it like a political machine. Well, the political machine is very curious. Isn't there like 150 appointees that the, the, the county exec gets to appoint? I've heard there's over 250. And the thing is, when the county, wow. uh, when the airport became an authority, so there's one third of the budget went to this authority status and they run their own operation now another third of the county budget under mental health runs their own operation yet there's still over 200 appointees there was way back then now we've lost two-thirds of the budget there still is 200 appointees yes the county needs to be looked at completely different reevaluated and trimmed of so, the fat so if you if, if you if you were there county exec would you like take the elbrooks approach well, Elbrooks um, doesn't have to deal with roads. It has its, Wayne, Oakland County has its own uh, road, road commission. commission. Uh, Oakland County has its own drain commission. Um, but I absolutely would take the Elbrooks approach in that you call in the sheriff, you call in the prosecutor, and make a deal, and you say, "This is what we have. How can we make this work?" And Brooks Patterson has just as many Democrats in those elected offices as he does Republicans. In in Wayne County, they're all Democrats. So it's not party, uh, partisan politics. The one, the it's one just thing, egos. The one thing I noticed with L. Brooks when the real estate values tanked, and he came out two years in a row and gave the budget of projected values. They projected the values lower than they actually were in order to become fiscally sound. I didn't see anyone else do that. It was a pretty remarkable move and it paid big dividends because it kept them solvent through through a bad time we're coming up on a break it's the end of the uh, this segment of the financial crisis talk center appreciate the fact that you're listening our next segment's coming up we're going to talk about the state of michigan